This is the finish, one of the finished breaks that I've, that I've been working on. He's out there on his own, man. He's got his own sounds, constant inspiration. And the thing, he never likes any of his tunes. You ask anybody and they're like, I can't understand it because he never likes any of his records. I find when I do a track, maybe I, I, I don't put all, I don't, I don't never put all my all into a track. I've, I've never, I, don't think, I don't think I've ever done that yet. I want to do a track, I might get like the breaks done and certain parts of the track that I really like done. And then I just fill up the rest of the track with sounds that are similar to what I want. You can hear a Dillinger tune within the first four bars, you're like, that's Carl. You just know. Is it the bass? I mean, it's his beats. Before his bass even drops, you, you, you know it's Carl. In there right now is just a just a kick, just a. It's all in there. Right. It's in there right now. You've got Carl. You know what I mean? He's 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 knocking out some really fat tunes. The things that he's doing with bass lines. You understand? You know he's coming with just like totally unique styles. And, you know he's trying. You know I can't hear him. You know I mean copying anyone at all. You know it's no it's no. It's like he's on his own. He's doing his own thing. You know and it's like he's creating his own sound and he's going his own direction. There's different techniques of distorting your bass. You can do it live. You can. That's just a that's just a basic flat kick. And then like you can there's loads of ways to do it. You can just put another you can double it up and sort another extra bass line track on it. You get a lot of hiss. And then hiss, but yeah. it, keeps it, it keeps it raw. Totally. When it comes in it's like a, an atmosphere to it. And you can There's just different ways you can do it. But that's how, that's the way I'm doing it today. Wow. There's loads of ways you can you can get that distorted sort of feel. The first time I met Delinja, he started talking to me about um, hertz and frequencies, and I was like, oh, man, this guy, this guy knows his bass. No, he, he's into it for, like, serious, you know. Carl, Carl's the worst one. He's, he's got tannoys, but his tannoys go lower than my ones. And, uh, Several, <laughs> several council lips. My biggest influence is Dillinger, really. Dillinger's, Dillinger's a very powerful artist, very quiet, but very powerful artist. When he's told, he's a bit of a demon, man. When he's, when he's, Carl really could take any, any dance floor apart and, and has done for many, many years because Carl's that kind of guy. And the breaks are all together at the moment, but. frequencies that he gets, the, the way his tunes sound totally apart from everybody else's because of the, the way he sets up the bass frequency, you've got a total understanding of what he wants to hear, you know. Uh, that's just me barking. <laughs> Human bark. Sometimes I get sample CDs, now and then, now and then, but if I can do it myself, I'll just get the mic out. I just make a noise with my mouth I twist it up in the sample or whatever and it just sounds like an effect. I need to get sessioners in to play what I want them to play because sometimes you, you can't always find a sample in a certain key. I mean you can stretch and at the end of the day you're losing quality. You can never find exactly yeah. what you want. Whereas now I'm working on my album I'm actually getting people in and telling them what I want to play and just locking it all in tight. Just resampling it. This is what Different percussion sounds. Sort of. The little song thing. I want everybody to make rec good records so I can have more records to play. 